Good day, Grade Twelves. My name is Kadir Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and welcome to one of my lessons. In this lesson, we are going to explain economic profit for a perfect competitor. So let's jump right into the lesson. Well, the first thing you need to remember is that um, whenever you draw a curve, whenever you draw an axis, make sure that you label that curve or axis. So in this case, we started by drawing our price and quantity axis. And uh, uh, the next thing is that I'm going to introduce the curves. The first curve, well, I always say it has to be a story that you're making when you're drawing a graph. Don't start your story from the, uh, from, from the middle. You, you start from the beginning. So it starts from price and then price gives us the demand curve. So in this case, it's an easy one. Once we get the price from the industry, uh, and, and why should we get it from the industry? Because this is an individual in a perfectly competitive market, and that particular individual is a price taker. So uh, let's see what the price is. So in this case, the price is 10 rand. And so this 10 rand is what every individual in this market is selling, whatever this product is, and it's a homogeneous product everyone is selling it so you cannot sell it for 12 rands because consumers have perfect information they won't buy so they will buy from your competitors who are selling at the market price of 10 rand so it's it's a, a good example is uh shares shares are homogeneous they are all identical, right? They're, well, in this case, I'm referring to shares of a specific company. Let's say MTN shares. They are all homogeneous and they are all being sold at the same market price by uh, people who are buying shares, investors. They are all buying at the same price. Or gold, that's another example. When you buy gold, you see it on the news that gold today is trading, was trading or at that particular point in time when you buy and other people are buying at that time, you are all buying at the same price. And you cannot try to sell it. Uh, if you, you can try it. Try to sell it for a higher price. No one would buy. But, well, if more people try to sell at that particular price, then, yes, the, 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 the trade will be executed because um, uh, forces are agreeing to that. So you'll see there will be that fluctuation happening because, yes, some are trying to push the price high and some are trying to buy at a lower price. But you'll see where if if buyers are more than sellers, you know what's going to happen. If sellers are more than buyers, you know what's going to happen. At one way or the other, price is going to be determined. So, well, so in this case, it's 10 rand. And so you as the individual has to take that market price. Now, the only decision you can make as an individual is how many units should you produce? So in this case, for you to, 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 to know how many units to produce, you should produce at a profit maximizing output. And um, that is a point where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. That means I have to introduce the marginal cost curve in this case. There's our marginal cost curve. And it intersects our marginal revenue curve at this point. Let me give it a name, point E. So point E in this case is not a point of equilibrium. It is a profit maximizing point. It's a point where marginal cost intersects marginal revenue. What does that give us or why is it significant? It is significant because it tells us how many units to produce. And in this case, it tells us that this particular individual should produce 10 units. So if this individual should produce 10 units, um, and, and we, we're saying 10 units is the profit maximizing point, does it mean then that this firm is now making a profit? And to answer that is uh, that question would say, we don't know. And we don't know because there's another curve that we need to introduce, which will inform whether or not a firm is making a profit. Okay, because marginal cost, uh, yes, you see this word cost, and then it might make you think that, oh, we can tell. But the truth is we cannot tell. Uh, it should be... Um, an average cost curve telling us that right so let me introduce the average cost curve 
Now, where I've introduced my average cost curve here, I've introduced it at a point, uh, as you can see, it's, it's, it's lower at our 10 units here. It's, it's lower. There you see. So if it's lower, then already we can tell what, what is being made by this firm. Cost is low. Revenue is high. So it doesn't need, it doesn't uh, need rocket science for you to know that this firm is making a profit. But what kind of a profit do we call this one? We call it an economic pro profit. And an economic profit is um, a profit where average revenue is greater than average cost. Well, this has brought us to the end. But if you want to know how many units, uh, well, I didn't do it in this lesson, but let me just quickly show you our ever, average revenue minus average cost. Okay, so what is our average revenue? It's 10 rand, as you can see. And what is our average cost? It's 5 rand, as you can see. And what is five, 10 minus 5? It gives us 5 or positive 5. And then we multiply by the quantity, which is 10. So this firm is making an economic profit of 50 rands. So that's why we say this graph represents an economic profit. Well, if you have questions, put your questions in the comments section down below. And I'll answer your questions. Thank you so much. And um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I uh, love you so much, subscribers. You, you are making this, um, this, this channel grow, and I really appreciate that. God bless.